Hey guys, so this is a video on word problems that have to do with money, so I'll just jump right into it. So these, these can be a little tricky, so we want to really build this up here. So here's a problem we're going to work with. Sarah has five more nickels than quarters. When combined, the coins are worth 475. How many nickels and quarters does she have? So this problem is actually a little complicated because we're talking about the quantity of quarters and nickels and what that quantity amounts to dollar wise. So it's really easy, I think, to get overwhelmed when you read some of these word problems. And the big thing I always talk about in word problems is to first figure out where's the equal sign. What's the general structure of this? And you know, how do you get to the equal sign? So as I read through this, the big thing that I see here is when combined, the coins are worth 475. So I've got some amount of nickels plus some amount of quarters. And if I combine those, I get $4.75. Okay, so we have to be careful with this then because this idea of working with some amount of these, this means like, uh, so, it, so if you're not totally sure what this means, by the way, this means like, you know, if I told you I have four quarters, you would know that that is one dollar, right? So how do you know that that's a dollar? Because you're taking really, what you're doing is you're taking four times the, the 25 cents, right? And that'll give you the dollar. So if you think about just this, this like basic example, this idea of having to multiply the quantity times the, the worth of the, you know, the coin, that's what we're going to have to do up here. So that's one thing I kind of wanted to state before we get into this. So that's, that's like something we have to use for our, our, our game plan. Okay, so what that tells me then is I'm going to have to take the worth of a nickel times the amount of nickels and I have to take what a quarter is worth, so 25 cents, times the amount of quarters. And so that'll get me to 475. Okay, so this approach is what's going to kind of lead me to, you know, getting to this dollar amount while also figuring out what is the, the quantity of each amount of coin. So this is kind of how I know that I'm, I'm going the right path because it says how many nickels and quarters do does she have? So I need to bring that in some way, but I also need some way to show that those amounts are going to equal 475. So this is kind of the, the right approach in, in this particular instance. Okay, so now I have to think about how do I express the quantity of nickels and quarters? Well, the one thing I see here is that the nickels, there are five more nickels than quarters. So the amount of nickels are actually being expressed in terms of the quarters. So I don't know how many quarters there are, so I'm just gonna write that out as Q. So this amount here, this is gonna be Q. And then for the amount of nickels that I have, so I need five more nickels than quarters. So I have however many quarters I have and then I need five more. So in this case then, my amount of nickels will be Q plus five. And so now I've actually got my setup here. So I've got 0.05 times Q plus five plus 0.25 times Q and that's gonna equal 475. And so now we finally have our setup. Now, if you've watched my videos before um, and you've been watching and, and paying attention to how to work with decimals, so one trick we can use here before we get started is we can actually get rid of the decimals by basically just moving all of the decimal spots over to spots like this. So this will now be five times Q plus five plus 25 Q equals 475. You don't have to do that, but if you dislike working with decimals, that's a good idea. Okay, so let me clear some space. And now we can push forward with the problem. So I just have to distribute this five. So this will be five Q plus 25 plus 25 Q equals 475. 
So now I can add my like terms. So 5q and 25q will give me 30q. And then I need to subtract off the 25. So I get 30q equals 450. And if I divide both sides by 30, I get that q equals 15. And so then this would be the number of quarters that I have. So I have 15 quarters. And then remember, the nickels were five more than this. So then I have 20 nickels. So I just add five onto that. Okay, so now I wanna kind of pivot here and take a look at a, a slightly different problem. So Maria has $75 worth of $1 bills and $5 bills. And in total, she has 27 bills. So how many $5 bills does she have? So this one is a little bit tricky. There's a couple different ways that you can kind of go about it. So the first thing that we want to do is, you know, figure out where does that equal sign go? And so the, the big thing that we see here is that this amount of money has to foot to $75. So I have the amount of $1 bills and I have the amount of $5 bills. Those are gonna equal 75. So we've got kind of something to get us started. Now here's the tricky part though. This is, and I think this is actually very tricky. So, this is a different problem from the previous one because the previous one talked about how, um, you know, the, there was the quantity of nickels in terms of quarters. In this case, there's nothing in this problem about that. The only thing we know is that she has 27 bills in total. So this next part that I'm going to show you is kind of a, a trick of how you can utilize this when you have no other information. Okay, so here's, here's the idea. So I know I'm gonna to have to take one times the amount of $1 bills, so this should feel somewhat familiar, and then $5 times the amount of $5 bills. So very similar setup, but now what we're gonna do is as we're setting up these quantities, we're going to leverage this little note here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, I don't know how many $1 bills there are. I have no guidance whatsoever, so let's just call it X. But there is one thing that I know. If I have X bills, I know that we have to amount to 27 bills in total. So just to kind of give you a little more context on this, let's say that I have two $1 bills. If I have two $1 bills, then how many $25 bills do I have? Or how, many, how many $5 bills do I have? I would take that 27 minus the two and I would have 25 bills that are left over. Or if I told you I have seven $1 bills, how many $5 bills would I have? I would take 27 minus the seven and that would give me the number of $5 bills. So what I can do here is I can kind of force these the quantity of this number of bills to ultimately add up to 27 if I do this. I don't know how many $5 bills I have, but however many $1 bills I have, I take that many and subtract it away from 27. And that's what will get me to these 27 bills. And so now I've finally got some way to express these quantities. Now, if that's tricky, I know this is, this is definitely a tricky explanation, but if you have questions on that, you can definitely feel free to leave me a comment. And I'm really more than happy to kind of maybe even make another video on this, you know, if, if you need me to break it down more or whatever. So I'm here for you guys. Okay, so now I've, I've got everything I need to actually do this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and, and distribute the five. And uh, five times 27 is 135. And then minus five X equals 75. Okay, so now I can go ahead and collect my like terms. So this will be negative four X plus one 35 equals 75. So let me clear some space. And now we can keep solving. So I'll, I'll go ahead and subtract off the 135. So now I get negative 4x equals negative 60. 
and then I can divide both sides by negative 4 to get x equals 15. Okay, now remember, our x, the way that we set up this problem, it was 1 times x plus 5 times 27 minus x, and then this equaled 75. So this x corresponded with our $1 bills. So there are 15 $1 bills, and then there are 27 minus 15, which equals 12 $5 bills, and that would be the setup there. Okay, so for this last one, so I've got tickets at a movie theater cost $15 for an adult and $10 for a child. And in the last hour, sales were $550 for the 40 tickets sold. So how many adult tickets versus child tickets were sold? So this one is actually very similar in reasoning to the last one. And I know the last one was kind of tricky, so I thought this would be a good one to end with. So what I want you to do is I want you to see if you can actually set this one up. So first find the equal sign, pause, find the equal sign, hit play when you're ready. So I have the amount of adult tickets um, plus the amount of the kid tickets and that comes out to 550. So the equal sign is going to be there at 550. So what I want you to do next is I want you to incorporate now some of the other information here. So the, the 15 and the 10 and the 40. So see if you can if you can continue to set this up and you can hit play when you're ready. Okay, so in this case, so I know I need to take $15 times the amount of adult tickets. And then I need $10 times the amount of kid tickets. And so that's how I bring in kind of money times quantity. Now, I know that the total quantity needs to come out to 40, but I have no other information here. So this is actually going to be very similar to our last setup. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take 15. I think I'll use the letter A to, to show adult ticket. And then to get to the kids tickets, well, I take 40 minus A. So it's that same idea of, I don't know how many of one were sold, but I know that these need to ultimately add up to 40. So this is how I do that. So I have A for the first one and 40 minus A for the other one. So then this will be, um, all of this will equal 550. And now I can just press forward with the problem. So I have 15A plus 400 minus 10A equals 550. So let me clear some space. So if I collect my like terms, so 15A minus 10A, that's 5a plus 400 equals 550 and then I can subtract off the 400 to get 5a equals 150 and then divide both sides by 5 to get a equals 30. Okay, So this time we used a for adult tickets so this is 30 adult tickets so remember I need 40 tickets in total so then I'm going to take 40 minus 30, and so that's going to be 10. So that's 10 kid tickets were sold. And so there's your breakdown. And so that'll cover it for this particular topic, guys. So any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.